to know in six minutes starts now. Brett Kavanaugh's accuser could tell her story at the Senate. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. These allegations ought to be treated with the utmost gravity. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says he believes Christine Blasey Ford, who has been invited to testify Monday before the Judiciary Committee, though Ford hasn't accepted that offer yet. She claims the Supreme Court nominee groped and tried to sexually assault her at a party when they were teenagers in the 1980s. He denies that and could also testify Monday. One of his old friends from high school, Megan McCaleb, has a hard time believing the allegations. It is not the Brett Kavanaugh that we know. It is so wildly inaccurate to his character. Democrats want an FBI investigation. President Trump has done something Democratic House Leader Nancy Pelosi calls desperate and dangerous, ordering declassifications in the Russia probe he calls a witch hunt, including the now infamous application used to get surveillance approved on ex-Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. As well as all text messages related to Russia without redactions from former FBI Director James Comey, his deputy Andrew McCabe, or as well as former FBI agent Peter Strzok and former FBI lawyer Lisa Page. Fox's Catherine Harrod. Some rivers keep rising in the Carolinas where roads remain underwater. Some communities badly flooded like Pollocksville. Our little town will never be the same again. Hurricane Florence also hit Wilmington hard. Fox's Evan Brown's there live. Yeah, Dave, the Army got through flooded highways delivering tarps, water, and food to this now isolated city. Woody White is the Hanover County Commissioner Chairman. I'm sure their MREs and, and food that's easy for people to, to eat without power and without cooking and things like that. Uh, they've got enough to feed everyone for a few days. More is readily available, but retail stores are reopening. Meanwhile, the Cape Fear River is expected to crest today, and that could bring more flooding to residential communities and the city's downtown area, Dave. And Florence is blamed for 32 deaths in three states. This is Fox News. Fair and balanced. <laughs> Doctor, award-winning chief medical correspondent, and Salon Pass user, Dr. Bob Arnott. For pain relief, the best solution may surprise you. I found that Salon Pass Lidocaine Plus works best for my pain. It's powerful, available without a prescription, and uses two anesthetics to numb nerves right where it hurts. It starts to work on contact, providing effective, lasting pain relief I can count on. Salon Pass in the silver box with the blue wave. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the, sales director, I'm the sales director you're looking for. But when you post on Indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience, who's also fluent in Japanese. With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. Officials are starting to distribute food, water, and tarps in Wilmington, North Carolina, which remains mostly cut off by floodwaters from Hurricane Florence. The death toll has risen to at least 32 in three states, 25 fatalities in North Carolina alone. We are going to see some scattered thunderstorms today. Some of them could be severe. The remnants of Florence moving into the northeast. There is the potential for damaging winds and surf remains rough. To spot any health issues before it's too late, doctors are advising you to get your kids screened beyond a routine physical if they play sports. RWJ Barnabas says a baseline concussion screening can measure activity of your kid's brain in a normal state. So then when they do have a, a concussion, we could repeat the test and we could match it up to their baseline to see if these are normal, abnormal values for them. Cardiac screenings can also detect any heart defects that could lead to sudden death on the field. Another pedestrian killed by a New Jersey transit train, the latest last night near the Matawan Aberdeen station. I'm Eric Scott. This is the Town Square News Network. At Ocean First Bank, our first thought is you. We put you first in all we do. Community banking for a century. We treat you like your family. Whatever you need, whatever you dream, let's make it a reality. Ocean First Bank, putting you first. When your dream is building a new home, we offer mortgage options designed with your convenience in mind. Like combining your construction and permanent loan into just one closing. Saving you time for the really fun stuff, like planning that housewarming party. Whatever you need, whatever you dream, let's make it a reality. Ocean First Bank, putting you first. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Opportunity Lender.
calendar. The remnants of Florence pass by New Jersey today, so it's going to be a pretty wet Tuesday overall with scattered thunderstorms expected. The heaviest rain and strongest storms will come in the afternoon and evening hours. It'll be mostly cloudy and breezy in between raindrops with highs around 80. Rain exits the Garden State tonight and skies should clear quickly, lows in the mid-60s. And a mix of sun and clouds tomorrow, making for a dry and pleasant day. Highs in the upper 70s, a taste of early fall Thursday, partly sunny and lower 70s. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dan Zarowin. WPG Talk Radio 104.1. From Harry Hurley Way in the world's playground to the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate my friend, Harry Hurley. You're about to find out why Harry Hurley has been named to the Talkers Magazine list of the 100 most important talk show hosts in the nation. Live from the studios of Town Square Media in Northfield, it's Hurley in the Morning on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Hey, this is Harry Hurley, and this program that you are about to listen to is presented by Chuck Malamut, a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley. The information, views, and opinions expressed on this broadcast are those of Chuck, do not necessarily reflect those of Morgan Stanley or its affiliates. They are current as of the date of this broadcast, subject to change without notice. Neither the information provided nor any opinion expressed herein constitutes a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, member SIPC. Chuck, how are you, my good friend? Good morning, Harry. How are you? I salute you. Top of the morning. Kirk, good morning to you, too. Our champion just walked into the studio, uh, Kirk. Our champion. <laughs> I didn't feel like a champion last night about about 3 o'clock in the afternoon when um, the, the White House comes out and says, all right, after the market close, we're going to come with the tariffs. Uh, you know, having having said all that, you know, we had a we had a really good week last week, and you know, the, the indices were were all up. Uh, global markets, you know, all improved. It was it was pretty unusual because you know, what has happened from the basically from the announcement of the tariffs, um, there's been sort of a disconnect between what is happening here in the U.S., which is sort of the safe haven for equity investment versus equity investments versus you know the uh, the emerging markets uh, versus the, the Hang Seng versus the Nikkei uh, and as a result of all that you know now now money continues to flow here into the US but you know the question is and we've seen a lot of rhetoric we've seen a lot of discussion uh, Mnuchin, Will Ross, you know obviously the president and you know, the, the, so now I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to talk about this this morning, but you know, the, they sort of drew a line in the sand. September twenty fourth uh, is, is going to be the start of ten percent on two hundred billion. So you proved you weren't listening. I was distracted. Because, right, because if you I was, were, you I, know if we did. I was distracted. So, I had other things. To believe it or call, not, I'm calling people out. I know that NPR was calling me, so I had. <laughs> he did it. He did it. I love it. Oh, sorry, Chuck. That's <laughs> so good. So in, in any in any case, he took my, he took my weapon from I me. I did. Yeah, that was so well done. <laughs> I learned from the best, Harry. Thank what you. can I tell you? Thank so, you. so, so in any case, um, you know, so last week, I mean, the S and P was up one point two percent for the week. Um, as a result, you know, telecommunications, energy, technology, industrials, consumer, discretionary, healthcare, all had a very very good week. The the sectors that um, you know. We're down, you know, we're, weren't down at all, really, to speak of. So everything was up. And as a result, you know, the U.S. dollar was down last week, um, and, and that helped emerging markets. But in a matter of just a sentence or a tweet or a quick conversation, I mean, I mean Mnuchin has been trying to get, you know, the U.S. to communicate, you know, with China. Uh, Wilbur Ross basically said the same thing this morning. I must have been listening to him while you guys were chatting, so I can be prepared for your hour right now. Smart. And and uh, and and the president is now taking the position. You know, is this is this really politics at its finest moment, or you know, September twenty fourth is going to come very very quickly, and. Now all of a sudden, you know, there, you know, there were three hundred ex- exceptions to the tariffs, including your favorite company that makes the iPhones. Yeah. Uh, that's very challenging. So because a lot of that happens in China. Yes. Yeah, so, so as a result, you sort of, you know, you pick and choose. And I think what's really the most difficult thing to do here, I don't think it's so much 
the, look, the tariff, I mean, the tariffs off, oftentimes turn into, you know, trade wars that oftentimes, you know, you know, have a negative impact on the markets. And you think about... To date, though, let's be fair, and not that you're not unfair. I'm not saying you're unfair, but to date, every time that President Trump has done this, it's resulted in a better deal for us. Yeah, I mean, if you look at if, if you look at NAFTA, for instance, um, you know, that's a perfect case in point. I think, I, but the, I think what happens is, you know, those that try to uh, create, you know, investing as a as a as a sprint versus a marathon, this can become very very challenging times because as a result. You try to set a portfolio with certain goals, aspirations, and dreams, and you have your very, very short time horizon. Yeah. And now something that is completely unrelated to earnings of a particular company comes out, and you know everybody sort of moves to the left side of the boat together. And as, as an evidence in the fact that we had a pretty good day yesterday in the markets until around 3 o'clock, 2, nine, two o'clock, 3 o'clock, had the, that, that reversal mm-hmm. – Going into the close, uh, the Nasdaq I think had its probably one of its toughest days in a couple months, and as a result, money is sh- is shifting from the more aggressive technology sectors to the more conservative consumer defensive areas. Well, Chuck, what about the principle? And I'm talking about the tariffs and what the president has been doing because I think there is it's not just ad hoc tor- sort of economics by voodoo economics by the president. He has a belief that we have been getting screwed with these deals for years where every one of them, the other side, has a better deal than we do. What about the concept of short-term pain, long-term gain? Well, I think that's being that's being exhibited right at this point in time. And, and I think the fact that coming in with, you know, 10% on $200 billion, select of $200 billion, I mean, the problem is, you know, I, the consumer can probably absorb it here in the U.S., um, the manufacturers, you know, the, the importers of, 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 you know, necessary goods to create or produce their product, you know, their supply chain has now been interrupted or will be interrupted. And they have, you know, they have to sort of pivot and get creative and be able to figure out a way to import the necessary product, you know, away from China and still be able to remain, you know, competitive within their, within their respective business. So I think a lot of that is going on, and we're not really hearing about that. We're, we're, what we're hearing about is that 10% on $200 billion, if we don't get to a resolution by December or year end, that's, we're going to ratchet that to 25%, and then we're going to go after another $267 billion. So it, it probably what it, what is happening here is that I think the Chinese are pretty much out of bullets. You know, when you think about you know, look at look at their particular market. I mean, you know, and think of you know one of the things we always talk about, Harry, is the fact that the markets are sort of leading indicators as to where we think respective economies are going to go. You know, so as as a result of that, you know, the Shanghai year to date going into uh, yesterday was down twenty one percent. The Hang Seng was down six percent. Uh, so. Uh, Clearly, the Shanghai, you know, the Chinese stock exchange was the worst year-to-date performer, uh, and really no other indices really markets came even close. I mean, the MSI, the MSCI emerging markets going into Monday were down about nine percent. So, think about the money that is now leaving that particular market uh, and finding finding other homes. As you know, take a look at comparative basis. S and P five hundred up ten percent. The uh, the Dow Jones up over seven and a half, and the the Nasdaq before yesterday. And yesterday was now off, off about one and a half percent. Was off was up sixteen point nine. So we're still up in excess of fifteen percent after yesterday's um, movement in the, in the markets. Now you would th- the immediate thing that happened a- after the close. Uh, you know the, the anticipation, the waiting. You know, it was sort of floated out there that ten percent was going to be the number, but it came. I think it was a little after six fifteen or thereabouts last night. And as a result, the international markets, uh, pre markets, were trading down. Same thing here in the U.S. And we went to bed. 
And as a result, when we wake up this morning, the all the, the international markets are all up, Harry. Uh, pretty significantly, the uh, European markets were up, and you know, the in the U.S., the Dow futures were up in about sixty. The S and P was up about five, and I think the Nasdaq was up maybe about fifteen. So the question is, you know, did we put that temporary bottom in yesterday? in providing again opportunities because oftentimes when you have situations like we had yesterday that you know those dips that provides opportunity where there's cash and there's a lot of cash just sloshing around so to speak looking to find a home you know now now you know it gives you know gives investors an opportunity you know to buy things a little bit less expensive than they were say the prior week we are going to take a brief time out you're listening to the best in the business chuck malamut the official the exclusive Financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program. Give Chuck a call, 609-383-2010, and learn about his perfected concept of total asset management coupled with the all-important asset allocation, all of your financial planning needs. I also take this opportunity to welcome Pat Concrete Foundation to the Hurley in the Morning program. I'm a big Ron Meischer fan. Lisa does a tremendous job as executive director. I love the work that they're doing, and they have some really exciting new plans that you're going to be hearing about on Hurley in the Morning in the near future. But let me tell you about an event where you can help out, and we will be making an announcement with Ron on air sometime in the next week or so. We're just working out each other's schedules. Uh, He knows uh, the announcement, and it's it's a very positive one. But in terms of the event that's coming up, if you love all you can eat clam chowder, if you love bringing the whole family out For a wonderful family event, Clamboree is for you. I love the name. Kirk Conover, the Clammer, is smiling at the the name. Kirk, I I see a combination of you out there doing your old job and also Flintstones with the country Jamboree, if you remember that, when they're singing by the campfire and all the the songs and all the nations from around the world are singing in their their native uh, dialect. It's just so neat. The Clamboree, I love it. And it will celebrate South Jersey's clamming traditions, which, Kirk, I think you would agree is immense. There's a great South Jersey clam tradition. Kirk is not nodding sure. affirmative. Sure. Yes. I asked you one time, how many clams do you think you've caught? It's impossible to know. Ten, Ten million, he says. I'm going to go with that. It sounds reasonable. There is a restaurant division clam chowder contest. So there's two of them, two contests. Then there's an amateur contest as well. And if you're a quick clam shucker, uh, God rest his soul, my dad, Tom uh, Hurley, was a tremendous fast clam shucker. He had the, had the tool, Kirk. He didn't need that fancy machine. You put the thing in it and bring down the trip hanger, hammer. He had just that metal blunt instrument. Bam. That's it. One move with a little bit of a circular little right on twist hinge. on the hinge. There you go. That's That was the technique. All kinds of things. Clamshell painting, which is a lot of fun. Seashore hunt or seashell hunt even. There's a lot of fun for the kids. There'll be clamming demos. There'll be exhibitors at the event. Clamboree, C-L-A-M-B-O-R-E-E dot com. Clamboree dot com for tickets and to register for contests for the tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. Clamboree sponsors are Charlie's, Harbor Outfitters, Ocean City Firefighters Association, Local 4032, Killer Clam Rakes, Slack Tide Brewery, and Clam Drain. Pack Concrete Foundation, big fundraising event, Saturday, September 29th in Kennedy Park in Summers Point. The party is benefiting the Pack Concrete Foundation. Early in the morning, WPG Talk Radio 104.1 and on the WPG Talk Radio app. At Shore Medical Center, they go to extraordinary lengths to deliver the highest quality of care in a safe and compassionate environment. They are pleased to provide six centers of excellence specializing in cancer, cardiovascular, neurological, orthopedic, emergency, maternity, and pediatric health care. To find a doctor, schedule an appointment, or find more information on the many excellent services Shore Medical Center provides, visit shoremedicalcenter.org. 
congratulations to Shore Medical Center for being the only hospital in Atlantic and KMA counties to earn an A rating for quality and safety by LeapFrog Group for Spring 2018. This is the eighth consecutive rating period in which Shore has earned this prestigious honor. Shore is proud of its physicians, nurses, and support staff who continue to provide the highest quality of care to the patients in our community. Find out more at ShoreMedicalCenter.org. Shore Medical Center, healthcare at its best. Auto Plaza and English Creek. Roll with Mr. Tire. This is Harry Hurley, and I'm with the mayor, Charles Kane, owner and operator of the Auto Plaza at Harbor Township. Mayor, tell your listeners who are looking for a car, why should they choose the Auto Plaza? Harry, it's our full service department selection and hassle-free financing alternatives that have set us apart for over 17 years. Over the years, we've been the recipient of many sales and service awards, as well as receiving an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. It's been a real honor for us. We are now serving a second generation of sales and service customers. Stop in today. You're going to love our staff and experience what makes us different. For all of your automobile service parts and sales needs, call the Auto Plaza at 609-646-2447. That's 609-646-2447. And visit us on the World Wide Web at myautoplaza.com. The Auto Plaza at English Creek. Roll with Mr. Tire. The WPG Cash Casino is open with your chance to win up to $5,000. Here's Harry Hurley with another cash code. Hey, thanks very much. This is Harry Hurley. This is WPG Talk Radio 104.1, and it is your latest chance to win up to $5,000 with WPG. And just listen on the 20s in the second, third, and fourth hour of the program each Monday through Friday, 720, 820, 920. I will give you a separate code word each hour. You take that word and go to WPGTalkRadio.com or write on the WPG app. If you haven't downloaded the free app, do it. And then the bottom right-hand side, you'll see the little speed button right there that will take you to where you need to do and register the code word three times a day. We gave you the first one an hour ago, and the code word for this hour is gadget. I'll say like in Inspector Gadget. One more code word coming up at 920. Another chance to win up to $5,000 with WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Chuck Malamut, I know you, you uttered the word inflation, but this is your opportunity of your program to talk about inflation what, what's what's the latest? Well, Harry, all, all indications that we that we have seen um, is that it's it's inflation as we know it, and that's one of the the Fed's items that they're looking to be very very careful to to sort of you know uh, navigate. The August data showed that the core consumer uh, price index grew only zero point one percent for the month. So the year over year earn the year over year reading actually slipped from two point four to two point two percent. Annualized headline inflation actually fell as well from two point nine to two point seven percent. So we think that price, you know, increases should be somewhat well contained, as inflation surveys out there show price pressures are going to be maybe somewhat modest, and wages rising slowly. But again. I'm going to go back to what we talked, how we started today. If it's more expensive uh, to bring goods and ser- goods into the into your company to manufacture, then ultimately on the back end, you know the consumer, you know the f- the final user of that particular product, you know could very well be paying that price unless a company can cont- f- effectively control their expenses. And take you know take a little bit a little bit of the hit so to speak. But here's where we're very very fortunate. And if you give me a little narrative and then tone it into a question, Kirk and I uh, spoke I believe eloquently on this topic. You were watching and listening to NPR at the time, or I think you would agree. Strong consumer confidence prevails. And I cited a Gallup poll which they do every year. It's not that they're just doing it this year. They do it every year for many many decades actually. Consumer confidence is the highest that they've ever measured. And they measured a specific area where they talk about, are you concerned about the economy? Only 12% of the American people registered that they were concerned about the economy. 88% are not concerned about the economy, which is the most positive reading 
they've ever had. So does the strong consumer confidence sentiment either suggest or prove that the economic expansion in America continues? Well, I, I think it does. I mean, when you look at the August University of Michigan's um, C- CPI index, I mean, it jumped to the second highest level that you've seen since 2004. And, and as a result, you know, the sentiment improved across all income groups, but the big concern that everyone had is, as you look at these surveys, is the fact, you know, what's happening with the trade, the rising trade tariff. So you sort of have, you know, you, you ride that highway where you're sort of, I guess, in the middle and you can't make a decision. You're on the left side or the right side. But, you know, we, we think that, you know, with with wage improvements, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, like how you, in fact, you know, increase wages. And it's not so much by staying in the company you're working for, but in fact, in fact, moving. Bingo. Uh, Which we have a record number of people quitting the job yeah. they have. So, so and why can they quit the job they have? Well, because there's more jobs than people. Correct. At this point in time, so I, I think you know you sort of have that 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 tug of war out there where the exact opposite of the lost decade. Yes, and now, now I mean, I, I it's pretty interesting. I had an opportunity. I was traveling. It was in the Midwest last week, and couldn't get on the show. And virtually every town I drove through, I drove from Minneapolis Airport to Wisconsin about an hour and a half. I can't tell you. I lost track of the number of signs out there. You know, the highway signs posted by the, these respective People businesses advertising for jobs. Help wanted. Help yeah. wanted. Um, all shifts, uh, sixteen, eighteen, twenty dollars an hour. Because you, you know, where I happened to be was a fair amount of manufacturing, and what what the company that I was working with for those two days, they have a lot of, you know, people they hire, leave, and they get rehired, in a, you know, because I guess they, they try other opportunities, maybe pick, maybe make another dollar or two down the street, and they find out that maybe that's not the right place to be. So you have this revolving door almost this constant turnover which you know is becomes as as an employer becomes very very expensive i mean you, you hire you train you staff you know uh, you schedule uh, if they're benefits. fortunate enough that they're bringing back people though that are trained and all that's it little, makes certainly makes it yeah. a lot easier but you yeah, know so so you know we just kind of chat about we we think that you know job growth is going to continue you know the labor market continues to tighten and I, I just find it pretty remarkable that, you know, the wage increases are not necessarily happening internally with a company, but they're happening as, you, as you're jumping See, now, until you from said one that, employer I, to I another. I thought both were happening. Well, it's happening more if, if you kind of look at the so number. This, this 2.9% increase is more because of people getting leaving, a new position Going someplace else. Okay. Yeah. So as a, as a result. Well, at some point, I would think employee retention is going to matter, and maybe that – the problem is you Staff as you as you work through, you know, and you and you lose good people, then all of a sudden it, it impacts on your productivity, which then has an, an ultimate impact on your pricing. So it's it's sort of a you know you go round and round that circle, so to speak. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, I mean, think you know, think about if you can hire, train, and retain. Uh, that's really, now, really what's what it, these companies it, need to do here. Unless you're telling me differently, it was my belief, and I've been saying it actually that existing companies are realizing that they're losing good people. So they're actually increasing people's salaries. They're increasing incentives and bonuses and things like that, and that they are mindful that this is not how it was where people had nowhere they could go. Now good people can just say, I'm going to leave, and I've got a new job, so see you later. Yeah, so it's, it's – we're in a catch-22 right now. It's just – I mean it's a it's a really good problem I was going to say it's a good problem you to know, have. It's, it's not like where we were just several years ago where – I mean think about – think about, you know, we always talk about college. We talk about college debt and, and we're not going to really chat about that today. But think about graduating a decade ago. And you couldn't and, get a job. And the likelihood of getting a job was was clearly – Do you – Chuck, do you think we're to the point where the college grads are coming out with multiple offers? They again? are. So there they it are, is. and it's, it might look. It's it's your first. I think what I oftentimes you know say to younger people, um, it, it's it's not your 
it's your first job's not your last job. And and now with the mobility that's out there today, I mean, when you when you had your first job, uh, you know, out of school, you I don't think you were thinking about this was going to be something that's really a short term position for me. Not at all. You know, you're thinking maybe I can make a career. Yes, exactly. In the organization I'm working for. Yeah. Um, Which I did for 10 years and, as you know, stayed for a few more and then changed. And, an, and another seven. another scary fact is in, in our world, the average um, worker today has five 401k accounts wow. that they have left behind. Think about mismanagement of your of financial affairs. I mean, there's if you can get everything kind of consolidated in, in, in fewer accounts, you have a higher probability of being able to manage through the process. But five different 401ks, five different websites, a lot of it is electronic now. There's no more paper statements. You know, I can't imagine that, that you're really spending that much time navigating through and managing your finance, financial affairs having all those accounts. That's true. And it's just a matter of saying, well, I'll get around to it later. It's a little cumbersome. I, re- I need some paperwork. But it's really something an employee, you know, really needs to think about. Because and, and let's get the halftime break in. And as we go to the break, it gives me an opportunity to say, call Chuck Malamut and give him the opportunity to help you plan your future. 609-383-2010. When we come back, Chuck is going to talk about what is next in terms of the next moves for equities as Chuck Malamut presents all about your financial matters. Chuck Malamut from Morgan Stanley leads his group, the Malamut Group, 609-383-2010 for all of your financial planning needs. We'll be right back. I know this is nirvana for Kirk Conifer. Uh, economics is like you, you might like, a, I don't know, a candy apple or or your favorite, No, who knows what. This is nirvana for my pal, I could tell. We'll be back in just a few minutes. When you need to know, make the switch to WPG Talk Radio 104.1. And when you need to know the absolute latest breaking news, download the new WPG Talk Radio app for your iPhone or Droid and enable push notifications. The WPG Talk Radio app will alert you to breaking news, road closures and traffic delays, important severe weather information, and more. Download the new WPG Talk Radio app today through Google Play or the App Store. Paul D'Amato. Harry Hurley. Paul, I know our listeners want to know what's new with the D'Amato Law Firm. Things are great, Harry. We are so privileged to represent our clients whose lives have been turned upside down because they were involved in a serious accident. We meet on a regular basis. We copy our clients on all our correspondence so they always know what's going on with their case. We try to treat them like family. We have Alexa here, my daughter. I'm, I'm so happy that she's here. We have Steve Van Natten and Casey Gifford. We're a great legal team. They're the D'Amato Law Firm. For all of your personal injury legal needs, turn to the official lead counsel to the Hurley in the Morning program for more than a quarter of a century. The D'Amato Law Firm in Egg Harbor Township, 609-926-3300. That's 609-926-3300. Tell Paul, Alexa, Sandy, the entire team that Hurley in the Morning sent you. What? Oh, honey. Honey. Jeff, wake up. Roll over. Your sleep and your relationship are suffering, but they don't have to. Is your snoring driving your spouse crazy? Do you hate your CPAP? Hi, I'm Dr. Gregory DeFelice, and I have an alternative for you. I have sleep apnea and used to snore like a freight train. I cured it with a comfortable oral appliance without surgery, medication, or CPAP. Come see me and I can help you stop snoring and get rid of your CPAP and regain the energy that you've been missing for so long. In most cases, they're covered by PPO medical insurance and you only need to see me a couple of times. So what are you waiting for? Schedule a free consultation today. Find out why people from the bridges to the beaches are coming 
coming to see Dr. DeFelice. With offices in Hamilton, Manahawkin, and Cape May Courthouse, he is conveniently located to serve you. Visit HamiltonBraces.com to set up your free consultation and start sleeping better because you deserve it. These days, having a video camera in the car is very popular, and for good reason. No one can argue with the facts. Typical dash and window cameras are awkward and expensive, but now there's the HD Mirror Cam, the affordable, high-quality video camera that attaches to any vehicle's rearview mirror in seconds. With its 2.5-inch playback screen, the HD Mirror Cam is crisp audio and high-resolution image that can be viewed instantly or downloaded for viewing and sharing later. Look at how many videos we see of all kinds of crazy stuff out there. Accidents, road rage, even people getting pulled over. The HD Mirror Cam takes away all the he said, she said stuff. It's all right on tape. No one can argue with that. With motion detection, auto ignition start, night vision, endless loop recording, and a full 350-degree rotation, the HD Mirror Cam offers more features than cameras costing many times more. To order HD Mirror Cam with our 60-day money-back guarantee, call 800-928-6931. That's 800-928-6931. 800-928-6931. On the next Markley and Van Camp, the Kavanaugh controversy continues. Meanwhile, a cat knocked out power to thousands of people, and we have a new candidate for Dad of the Year who used his son to steal arcade prizes. And that's not even the bad part. Well, this will be fun. Markley and Van Camp this afternoon at 1. Now, Harry Hurley on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Susie's laughing because like a like a small child. I'm so happy because Charlie Falkenstein has my favorite pretzels from the pretzel factory and they are piping hot. Kirk, please take one and take it. Take a take a few so you can take some back to, to the gang. I'm not telling you to leave now, but if you leave at the top of the hour, I want you to take some of them. Oh, I'm going to break Susie's big smile because she knows how happy this makes me. And I always spread the joy. Oh, there's nothing like these when they are piping hot fresh. Right. Chuck, this day just keeps getting better. You're here. Kirk was just here. Kirk is still here. Charlie brought pretzels. Come on. Miss America had that microphone yesterday. Pinch me. Go ahead, Chuck. Equities. And your Philadelphia Eagles have Boston. an opportunity next week. With Carson Wentz. So in, in, in any case. Hey, they lost week two last year, too. They did. Yes, I've yeah. read all about it, Harry. So. You know, the the next move for equities is probably going to require, again, some easing uh, with respect to the trade tensions that we just spent a fair amount of time talking about and improving global uh, economic growth. So, you know, rising earnings have provided a, a pretty good tailwind over the last year for stock prices, but earnings are going to probably moderate a little bit over the next 12 months. So that's where we think we're going to go uh, with the stock market. Um which kind of, I'll keep going because I see that you you're doing a fine job. You're like a chipmunk. This is you know this you is have the only time I ever break my rule <laughs> of not eating in the studio. Harry, I wish I could take a picture of you with your headset on and your mouth just full of the press, but you're doing a fine job. So I'll just keep going. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Um, so. We've always talked about the midterm elections. There, you know, it's it's we don't think they're going to really significantly affect the direction of the stock market. You know, you know, the, the president's taking a really, really hard line, as you know, with respect to the trade issues uh, and international relations. So we don't expect that's going to change the, the outcome of the midterms. And we don't think the Democrats are going to be able to put much, uh, exert a lot of influence uh, over these matters, even if they gain a majority in the, in the House at this point in time. You know, the good news, historically speaking, if you look back at, at the S&P 500, uh, we could be uh, looking at some gains regardless of the outcome of, of the elections. The, the S&P 500 index has not fallen in the 12 months following a midterm election since 1946. So kind of put that in the bank and think about unless, you know, things go totally in the, in the, in the wrong direction as far as, as far as the stock market is concerned, that we should have we should have a pretty good year, um, you know, right after right after the midterms, um, which kind of takes me to the next point. Uh, you know, we, we always talk about, you know, taxation, you know, un, uh, uh, taxation with unfair representation. And um, I, I've, I've almost fell off the chair when I read this the other day. You know, the most recent information that was released by the Tax Policy Center indicates that approximately 76 
1.4 million Americans will not pay taxes, any federal taxes in 2018. That is up from 72.6 million in 2016. You know, one million households in the top 1% account for roughly 43% of individual income taxes that are collected in 2000, were collected in 2018. And that's up from 38% in 2017. So Stunning. You, you, you have, I mean, the, the media is out there, you know, beating the drum, you know, talking about a, a lot of what I'll call fake news. But, but at the end of the day, that, this is not fake news. I mean, you, you have a very, very small portion of our population, you know, basically being responsible and or carrying the load, so to speak, with respect to, you know, federal income taxes. So that's a, you know, that's a pretty scary number when you think about it. Markets wanted Hillary Clinton to be president. You know I never understood that because it made no sense to me. Then, of course, the markets roared after it went the other way. Do you think that the um, markets are settling in on exactly what they think is going to happen, that there will be split government, one house in control of Democrats, one in Republican, and the president? Are markets – Yeah, I think so. I, I think the markets – and, you know uh, – Clearly, the markets trade on earnings and fundamentals. Now, all of a sudden, you know, with with the, with the second quarter earnings, you know, being you know you know well into the books, third quarter ends relatively soon. Uh, they'll start posting around October eighth, tenth, or thereabouts. So now we have that sort of that quiet period where we're trading on you know the, the news of the day. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I think the markets you know have digested the fact that you know things might be a little bit different um, and. It, but historically speaking, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we still should be in, in store for a pretty good year uh, after the midterms. Brief time out. We'll be right back. More Chuck Malamut after this. Early in the morning, WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Health Update with Robin Stoloff, brought to you by Atlantic Care, a member of Geisinger. Mom always told us to eat our veggies, and once again, Mom was right. September is Fruits and Veggies More Matters Month. We all know fruits and vegetables are filled with fiber and nutrients that make us feel great and help prevent a variety of medical conditions. But most kids and adults do not eat the recommended two servings of fruit and three servings of vegetables every day. The My Plate Nutrition Guide makes it simple. They remind us to fill half of our plate with fruits and vegetables at every meal. Some other ways to add them to your diet? Grab an apple on the way out the door. Eat a salad for lunch. Add some kale to a smoothie. You won't even taste it, I promise. Just make it a priority to add more fruits and veggies to your life. For more information, visit hashtag more matters. I'm Robin Stoloff for Health Update. Health Update with Robin Stoloff, brought to you by Atlanticare, a member of Geisinger. Call 1-888-569-1000 or visit atlanticare.org. Ocean First Bank, our first thought is you. We put you first in all we do. Community banking for a century. We treat you like your family. Whatever you need, whatever you dream, let's make it a reality. Ocean First Bank, putting you first. When your dream is building a new home, we offer mortgage options designed with your convenience in mind, like combining your construction and permanent loan into just one closing, saving you time for the really fun stuff, like planning that housewarming party. Whatever you need, whatever you dream, let's make it a reality. Ocean First Bank, putting you first. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Opportunity Lender. Your vehicle is one of the biggest investments you will ever make. At Ed's Auto Service on Foster Avenue in Vineland, they strive to maintain your vehicle in the shortest amount of time for the best price without sacrificing quality. It is a philosophy that has worked for over 65 years. Ed's Auto wants to keep your family safe on the road. Get your vehicle inspected with Ed's Family Tune-Up and Inspection for just $29.95. Call Ed's Auto Service at 856-691-6034 or visit edsofvineland.com. 
The insane inflatable 5K is coming to town, so grab your friends and family and have some fun at the zadiest fun run you've ever done. In 2018, inflate your fitness as you climb, weave, and bounce your way through 11 insane inflatables that will challenge and surprise you and leave you wanting more. Get your bounce on Saturday, October 6th at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Check it out and register early to take advantage of special savings at InsaneInflatable5k.com. We'll see you on the course. Your next chance to win up to $5,000 is at 920 this morning. Now, Harry Hurley on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. I was really happy about that three-minute break because Chuck got to eat three soft pretzels during the break. Chuck, you're welcome. Uh, I know you have to go in just a couple of minutes, and we have a lot that we want to cover. I remembered 9-11 because Harry. in your absence, let me go right on. That was just brilliant what I did. Just let me let me go on. But sad but not true. Uh, you didn't have three pretzels during the break? I had zero pretzels. So let's... You mean d- fake news? Absolutely. Are you calling out fake news? Yeah. Just a big pretzel Kirk, you break the tie. Did Chuck eat three pretzels during the break? No, 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 we won't do that. No, don't do that to me. You got to choose between No, and Kirk ate none either, so. No, Chuck didn't eat any pretzels during the break, nor did I during the break. Now, Chuck, remembering 9-11, I did on your day of travel because we did what we've done every year for 18 years, the first year when it was happening live, we were on the air, and the 17 years Every September 11th, or if it's on the weekend, the Friday before, we we do the program that took place on September 11th, 2001, when the terrorist enemy hit us. So remember 9-11 and the stock market. Uh, Why should we do that, Well, Harry, if you think about it, you know, the the stock market was actually closed for six days, you know, following the attacks, and, and reopened on September 17th, 2001, and there was, you know, a, a lot of rallying around the equity markets and, you know, buy American, get into the stock market, uh, show that, you know, show your true colors. And I, But unfortunately, you know, the one year following, you know, the attacks, the S&P was actually down, you know, 15 and a half percent. You know, a lot to be said for that. I mean, there was a lot of discussion. There was, a, you know, there was a lot of commentaries around 9-11. You saw a lot of shows related to it. I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, it's hard to believe that <clears throat> it's 2001, but it seems like it was just yesterday. Closing comments because I know you have to leave. Yeah, so there's just a couple things. I mean, we, we, let's, let's think about um, oil for a second. You know, uh, you know, we you have you have chatted about uh, you know, can oftentimes we can, can we can become independent? So, yeah. you know, we import twenty two less percent in oil today than we did a decade ago. Um, you know, oil imports have averaged seven point seven uh, million barrels a day, down from nine point eight uh, million barrels a day. You know, back you know comparing you know over the last decade. So I, I think we can you know can. We can become energy independent. Um, you know, I think we're certainly, you know, stepping in the right direction here. Chuck, because you're going to leave and there's no more <clears> breaks, <throat> so I have to do this live on the air. If you would like to take some of these delicious soft pretzels to the office for the team, I'd like you to reach in that bag. <laughs> I'm going to ask Kirk if he'll finish the hour with me. Uh, I'd like you to take a few of those soft pretzels with you, Chuck. All right, Harry, I'll Seriously. see what I can do. All, All right. right, thank you. The one on the end, I've been nibbling on. We'll I didn't bite ne- it, but we'll, I tore off pieces. We'll see you next week. All right, grab some pretzels. Kirk, let me uh, finish some economics with you. One of the things that we were going to cover was Lehman Brothers out of business. I remember in real time a decade ago, and Neil Cavuto showed it the other day, then just entrepreneur, businessman, television mogul, uh, executive producer, television host, Donald Trump said maybe they have to go out of business. He said it before it happened. Well, you know, I've always – wondered why they didn't bail Lehman Brothers out. I've asked why Chuck, them? I've asked Chuck Mallow about that. They I don't bailed know, everybody else yeah, out. Yeah, I don't understand why they didn't. It Was it because their CEO was totally obnoxious, had a bad personality? I don't know. You know what I think? You know, here, See what you think of this. Mm-hmm. I'll never be able to prove it. It's like this thing we're going to see next week. You'll never be able to prove it. you just got to listen to different people blabbing about stuff. Here was my theory about that. They had to make it look like not everybody was getting bailed out with the taxpayers' dollars. So they had a big fish take a huge fall. Grab some pretzels, Chuck. Come on. Come on, Chuck. Grab some pretzels. He won't grab pretzels. All right. Uh, More for you to take back to Shore Agency. But that's my theory. They let him fail 
so that they could say, well, we didn't bail everybody out. I mean, look, Lehman Brothers forever. I mean, they weren't too big to fail. I think they were the sacrificial lamb. What do you think of that? But they're the only one. And I, that's right. that's probably right. They, they may maybe that's they that degree were, that you bestowed upon me. <laughs> that I'm putting the work. Maybe they were getting pressure uh, just along the vein you were you were speaking of. Um, and I've always maintained that if they had bailed Lehman Brothers out, the 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 financial crisis would not have plumbed the depths that it did. I think you're right about that. I think they had the whole just face the whole specter though of government bailing out the big guys while little guys were losing their homes and their however, businesses. However, Bear Stearns... Remember, too big to fail. Had, Bear Stearns was allowed to fail in April of 2008. So correct. they already had their, we're precedent. not bailing everybody out. Yeah, precedent was, was set. So. Interesting point. This one, Chuck calls one of the, um, the rungs in the stools, one of the legs of the stool, and it's real estate. What are your thoughts about real estate? Well, it is uh, the most fundamental uh, investment anyone can make. Uh, Obviously, owning your home has always been the American dream. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the economy, um, it's not me that says it's economists over time have always said all wealth eventually comes, if you trace it back, the creation of wealth comes from the ground. Trees grow from the ground. Houses get built from the trees. You know, concrete comes from the ground. You plant in the ground yep. and eat. So, yeah, real estate is a big, big, big factor in the economy. Nine, 92% of all millionaires made it in real estate. How about that? That's a good stat. Yep. How about that? And um, the other and, stat. And, and when real estate is also what I call percolating, and you have right. our financial markets roaring. And you have consumer confidence way, 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 way up, historically unprecedented up. And then you have real estate also going all at the same time. This usually is the calculus for a rip, roaring, as the president would say, beautiful economy. Owning your home, uh, getting it at a reasonable price, financing it correctly, and then, um, you know, servicing your mortgage correctly. It's, it's the single most powerful way for a family to build equity for their future. And when you have um, a financial crisis that, that, that uh, was created by, you know, crazy no-doc loans and uh, ninja loans. I was just going to say, if you didn't say it, yeah. no income, no job. No Ninja verification of loans. anything, just give you a loan. How was that ever going to turn out? I mean, if you have no income, that means your first payment, even if you get like a, a month grace, if you settle on a certain day and you won't be due for a month or whatever, that first month, the payment is not going to be made. It was, so, it was, it was a crazy situation and exacerbated by the fact. Then they had to overcorrect, though. Oh, yeah. Then it got crazy right. with, with it all. With the regulations. But – Let's trace it back. I mean, what made it even worse was the fact that Bill Clinton and his Treasury Secretary, Robert Rubin, pushed in 1999, and they were successful in repealing the Glass-Steagall Act. The Glass-Steagall Act was a creation of the 30s, reaction to the Great Depression. Does that have anything to do with Dangle Norwood? Remember Al Gore in the debate? <laughs> George Bush is looking like, what are you talking about? Dingle Norwood. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. By the way, did I just read, is Dingle like 92 or so years old and had some kind of heart situation? Had a heart attack. Yeah, is in the hospital right yeah. now. What? I was, wouldn't have actually would not have brought up his was name. Was it his wife or his daughter that took his place? I don't recall. He's no longer a congressman. No. But he was the longest serving elected federal legislator of all time. By the way, that's a f- common little trick. I'm not a big fan of that, Kirk. Yeah, I think it, it was Look at his... all the examples. That, and then, I mean, when Sonny Bono was killed skiing, by the way, he was a good congressman. He didn't get his due because he's Sonny. Right. But Mary Bono was excellent. So yep. it's not always a mistake. It's not always... Yep. doesn't always turn out bad. But I'm not a fan of something happens to you, 
so your spouse gets it. Like I wasn't a fan of Cindy McCain getting the appointment. I was no, I was happy. No. And she didn't I don't think she really wanted it. But anyhow. Glass Steagall created to separate commercial banks and community banking where you have your savings account, Christmas club, checking accounts from investment banking. Let's to separate the risk. So now it gets repealed in 99. So from 99 to 2008, all these banks, investment banks and commercial banks start merging. So now you got the investment bankers risk in your commercial banks. Mm. So that really was if, uh, you know, the bad loans and the mortgages and, and sloughing them off to Wall Street and creating the Remember derivatives. The toxic, yeah, the toxic. And- yeah, and creating the derivatives to spread the risk that really didn't spread the risk. And the tranches in these mortgage-backed securities that were falsely rated. All that. <clears throat> the real bomb was the fact that it hit these banks. Yeah. Not, and it hit your commercial bank your community bank, because they were then part of the risk pool created by the investment yep. banks taking all these toxic mortgages yep. into their fold. Now, to their to their credit, the banks paid back everything that they were yes. that they were given in record time. Yep. And and you know they made Wells Fargo part of the bailout, even though Wells Fargo didn't need it. Yeah, because well, they wanted to. Well, remember, there make were it people, all look fair. And I'm not even talking about just Hank Paulson in the movie. Who was he played by? John Hurt. I'm not even talking about the movie, but it's a true story. Even though the movie sometimes movies go over the top, there were banks that did not want the bailout. Right. They were pushed into taking the bailout. They didn't want it because they didn't want to say, "Well, so and so didn't get the bailout, so they're good." So that means these other guys. Must be bad. Right. It was going to make so everybody look, had to get it. Everybody so that had nobody to get it. could make a, a discerning everybody judgment about Lehman who Brothers. was in bad shape. Now keep in mind, they could have saved and Lehman in the Brothers because there were people that didn't even want it, but they wanted it. Yeah. And they couldn't get it. But and in the movie, who played the head of Lehman Brothers? James Woods. Oh yeah. And he played it fabulous. Yeah, he was great. He's a good actor. Very yeah. good actor. Kirk, I brought this up, and Chuck mentioned it before he left, and you, you and I have talked about it to an extent. Chuck has a good point when we bring this up from time to time. There are certain manufacturing and processing costs and things like that that would become an issue potentially if we ever tried to be 100% energy dependent, independent for oil, let's say, because maybe it's better to just pull up a barrel of oil out of the ground and export it than it is to have to refine it. And we have a limited amount of refinery capacity because in, in large measure, and I'm not trying to be political because we're being talking economics oh, it's the truth. and finance, but it's the truth. The Democrats made it this way. Yeah. They did not want any additional refinery capacity. They they were trying to destroy the industry, trying to destroy the coal industry. And Obama, in his own words, said it. Oh, you can open up a coal plant, but we'll we're going to put you out of business. business. Yeah. So there are no they lies here. They want any pipelines. Right. So, but if we have the right policies – and we increased our oil refinery capacity, couldn't we, shouldn't we be energy oil independent? We certainly can be over time. Uh, What you've seen is something that I talked about a long time ago when these uh, wackadoodle so-called economists that wrote articles for the New York Times said, you know, we hit peak oil in 2007 and the whole world supply of oil is going to go down, down, down after 2007, and all it's done is gone up, up, up because of technology. That's the innovation of the market system always maximizes production. They're going back to old wells, back to old deposits, the fracking, all the stuff adds up to we are now the world's largest producer of crude oil. I, I, surpassing amen. Saudi Arabia. Amen. That's amazing when you think about it. And, and there course, is there is an argument to be made that exporting it in its raw form is more economically beneficial. Chuck said that. Chuck has said that. Because And look, I'm persuadable to it. I'd rather be independent, but I'm persuadable to that. Alaska oil yeah. is sold to Japan. Yeah. It doesn't come down here because it's more economic for us to take the money we make from selling it to Japan yep. and use that money to refine the oil that does stay in the and country. And then we can import. And ironically, 
January of 2017 was the first month oil exports were allowed there you go. from the United States. Kirk, and now they're Kirk, setting records. Chuck would have crushed this question if he could have stayed for some overtime. History of the Fed and interest rate increases. Quick 30 or 40 seconds on that. You well, know my feelings about it. Well, the Fed, Very political, in my opinion. The Fed is always under suspicion when they increase interest rates because increasing interest rates is a, a way of, number one, fighting inflation, but it also slows down economic growth. And, you know, that can be detrimental to the but opportunity of course we society. Stay, we couldn't stay at zero, though. No, it had to return to some normalcy right. of 3%. Yes. And we're slowly getting there. Yes. Kirk, Gary Aldrich, I'm sure you got to go open up shop, but that microphone is open if you want to stay. Uh, Gary is going to be here in a bonus extra edition. We're going to do Friday as well. Gary Aldrich, he texted me. So you know he wants to be heard. And we know what about next. WPGG Atlantic City. WENJ 97.3 HD3 Millville. Everything you need to know in six minutes starts now. She has yet to RSVP her invite. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. Christine Blasey Ford has yet to uh, respond to the offer to testify Monday at the Senate Judiciary Committee about her allegations Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh attacked and groped her at a party when they were teenagers in the 1980s. I believe her. Many, many, many Americans believe her. Democratic Senate Leader Chuck Schumer wants an FBI investigation. Kavanaugh denies it. Could testify Monday as well. Republican Senator Susan Collins says. If 